Hello, I am Rachel Morgan, a sales coach and trainer who helps you learn how to convert your leads into paying clients without wasting time. Today, I'm so excited to bring someone on whose name is Sim. And Sim is a social media strategist and coach who supported over 20 clients just last year to make that shift from a struggling freelancer to a buzzing business owner. She helps service-based entrepreneurs lead with heart, attract and sign their next clients, make an impact, and build an authentic brand by leveraging the power of social media. When she's not working on her business, she's building her community to inspire South Asian women on the account brownbossesbabe.co. So today we're going to chat about why sales and marketing kind of feel icky and how we can really lead with integrity so that it doesn't feel icky, something that is near and dear to my heart. So this is going to be a wonderful conversation. And for everyone who is just joining, I would love to know where are you from? And please make sure to share any questions that you have while we're we're chatting for you. So, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are. Hello. Hi, Rachel. Good morning. Thank you. Good good evening to you. <laughs> good evening to me. <laughs> I always say it. Time is a funny thing, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> now tell everyone that is tuning in, where are you from? So I'm tuning in from Bombay right now, which is in India, and it's... 10 30 in the night and my day is just beginning because <laughs> all my clients are mostly us or uk so yeah it's just like midday for me so yeah so nice to have you here to have me here so thank you so much for having me on and i hope you're all doing good yes i love it we have someone from france how cool literally we're all over the world today Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So welcome, welcome. Well, I want to know, in your own opinion, since you come from the marketing side, right, and I'm on the sales side, what about marketing do you find icky? I think like what I've got in the past from certain objections of people is that it can be sometimes manipulative, if that, that's mm -hmm. the word, right? They Man manipulate you, basically. Yeah. So people can be like, okay, it's very... Um, showing you the half truth basically so a lot of times people have bought into things and they have like the transformations were like you know oh you're gonna like i don't know get 10k in 10 days and they've bought it in you know like they've bought the course or whatever the program and then they're just like that's a lie you know and i think like i won't say i wouldn't put the blame on just the consumers i think it is a shared blame of the industry but sometimes the marketing could have a way of showing something only in the light that you would like your consumer to see it in, you know, instead of the actual light it is in, you know. So that's what I feel sometimes I get the objection from a lot of people. Right. So what I hear you saying is that sometimes marketing feels really deceptive. Like we are saying something in order to get people to buy it, but it's not necessarily what you're actually getting. Like saying, you take this course, you're suddenly going to make $10,000 a month, or you're going to Six figures in a year right absolutely and I think like we've all been on that side like around five years ago where everything was buzzing and we've all had these kind of campaigns thrown at us and um, I'm not saying that they are right or wrong it's just not my way of doing things and I genuinely feel like that's why that's where this whole question of what is intentional marketing and authentic marketing and how do you have that to support you in your business instead of this kind of deceptive marketing you know Right, right. And, you know, I will tell you, having worked in business for so many years, right, just different experiences, like, to make a million dollars or six figures even is not easy to do, right? Like, it's not something that just happens in six months. It takes, you have to have foundations, you have to build up a client list, you have to build up um, a community of people that love what you do. And believe in you like it's you can't just like open your doors and have people buying right away so it's definitely a big misconception um yeah. not to say someone can't do it obviously it's been done it came from somewhere but I think from my experience it's, it's never as easy as it sounds right absolutely like I always tell myself even that if something sounds too good to believe then probably it's not good <laughs> it's not the truth so you should just kind of sometimes be a little aware of how even as service providers, we are positioning our offers and our services. It's very important that we do that because uh, honestly, I always say like we have nothing except integrity to mm -hmm. bring to the table. 
people i work with people all over the world i'm sure you have rachel as well and you know you don't always know these people you've never touched their hands you've never met face to face you know yeah. but they still get to trust you like you know you trust you because of integrity that you carry you know and uh, i think you would know it better than me but after sale services are also a big thing right so it's not just about making that sale but how do you build that client loyalty and you know the fact right. that they retention you know all these kind of things yeah well i think what i hear you saying that is you know, is that integrity plays off of your reputation a little bit too and how people perceive you and you know we spend all of this time trying to establish a positive reputation but it literally takes seconds to destroy it you could spend yeah. right it takes it takes one thing and so i think that having integrity within your business all the way through is really important so that you do maintain it right if you want it right which i'm guessing that most people do um yes what else about marketing do you feel like is kind of icky or not um mm -hmm. full of integrity I would say uh yes the one is the transformational promise that sometimes is too loud than it should be the second thing i would probably say is also um the other side which is on the service provider which is how much of the truth are you showing of your of everything that you're doing right so like how much are you sharing like i always say that if you're only sharing wins and the right things and the nice things then ask yourself are you living in the instagram of 2022 or you're living in the instagram of 2015 because that was the time where our best lives were on the gram like all the time where only the highlights it was like the highlights of life right whereas today when we are in a place where people are aware like even in terms of other factors yeah that you cannot just always have your highlights so second important thing for me even when i buy into something or i work with someone or i collaborate with someone is how transparent are they in their journey mm -hmm. that's really important in my terms so that would be like the second thing i feel like sometimes it can become icky yeah. because so for example we use something called fomo right like fear of uh, missing out in yeah. marketing quite a lot where you're like five spots left and like three spots left and i always say there's no harm in informing people how much of the spots are left or any of those things but don't drive somebody to take action out of fear instead inspire them to take that action because that's what's going to make them feel good about their decision of investing in you as well and it's not like we said it's not just about the sale so like these kind of tactics which sometimes can become a little icky and sleazy so yeah right no i actually love that you brought that up cuz i will say from a sales standpoint you know one of the ways you can ask for sales is to create a sense of urgency right fomo right you absolutely right because we don't want to feel like we're the one person who's not taking action in something but there's nothing wrong if there's an and so this is something i always tell my clients is like it's a tactic if it's a real thing if you really do have this many spots left or you really do have to close the doors or pricing really is changing that's a great tactic to remind people you got to take action now but to simply sell on that is not a thing and you're literally like setting someone up to not enjoy the experience with you because you're putting them in a place of fear to say yes to you versus like what you just said of feeling empowered and excited and it's like such a better experience when someone is empowered and excited right absolutely and it's like kind of like for me like i'm just fresh off a masterclass launch i did last week and when we were i was talking about it it was like a party behind the scenes and i could feel like everybody who was like okay i really want to join in i really want to join in it didn't come in like a way that and i didn't have like a million signups i had when i finished i finished with 10 signups and i was very happy about that and i didn't have to tell anybody that i have just 10 signups or like you have you grab your spot now kind of a thing i was like yeah grab your spot if you want like but it's 6 hours it's my job to present an opportunity to the person who's consuming my content it's not my job to convince them like that is 90% of the work should be done by your content right or like the way you show up your energy so i can only present them that opportunity and remind them of it i cannot lie my way into it that you know like i have and i i know it's sad sometimes you see that and i don't want to like it's completely fine it exists but 
I had a client once who also asked me that Sim, I so should I just lie that I had like two spots? I said, Are you crazy? Just never do that. <laughs> just never lie because people are gonna always see through it, and they're oh. gonna see through that energy. Right. Even if you fail at something, you know what I'm saying? Right. Well, and I think that if there's always two spots open, like you said, like people catch on and they feel taken, and that's like actually, <laughs> I can go into this, but that's a huge thing. Like the sale is like the perception they have of you and the feeling right even after working with you can influence how they feel about the entire experience with you and therefore can impact your sales but that's a different conversation right than what we're gonna talk about but i mean obviously it relates because you know we want sales we want marketing we want people to come in right but i did want to in this comment someone said socially you're ritz i'm so sorry if i said that wrong um, please correct me, but uh, yes, there's so many dishonest marketers on here, especially the industry leaders. And, you know, like, we have a voice, even like what we're doing right now, to make a difference and show who we are. And we can be that change that we want to see. Absolutely. You know, to follow the lead with the industry leaders. Absolutely. I love that. I love that, Rachel, because it's true. Like we can be the change we want to see. And that goes with not just the leaders, but also the consumers. We both have the choice to make that change. Do. That, means, yeah. that means if we are being transparent and showing you the other side of everything, you also show us and understand where we are coming from. Don't come to us like at, expecting that things are going to happen miracle, like overnight successes. Overnight success does not happen overnight. And that's something even it's as much of a responsibility for you to understand that it is for us to understand, you know, and that's the shared responsibility, which will make that change happen. Right. Now, the other thing that when we're thinking about sales and ickiness is like a lot of people will be really nice to you just to get the sale. And once they realize that you're not buying, they stop talking to you or they they. <laughs> So just I'm awesome. laughing because this just happened to me like around a week back. I'm literally laughing and it's really funny you brought this up because that actually happened to me that I was really interested in understanding somebody. She was selling something and I was like, I'm really excited to ask you questions. And I was asking her questions and midway, I think she just was like, oh, I'm just bored of like helping her. And because I took my time and then she just turned completely 360 on me. And I'm just like, that's weird. Like for me, I've had people in my audience who have converted after one month of knowing me, six yeah. months of knowing me, years of knowing me. And that's completely all right because you invest in people, not just expect a sale from them, you know? Right, oh, 100%. You never know when someone is ready to buy, never. And I will tell you that if you consistently show up with integrity and being on it, that goes into authenticity and all that, right? Um, people feel that and notice that and are more likely to tell others about you to work with yeah. you. So even if I'm not ready, doesn't mean I don't know someone who else who isn't because of how you carry yourself. And like, I'll never forget that I reckon I, someone really wanted me to hire them and it didn't quite work out. And so I ended up recommending someone to them back to me and they were like wow I never thought that just being nice to you would get client, even if it wasn't you and it's like yeah you know and that's a reputation that's integrity it's because they recognize that this person has something and I want to share them with others right and they didn't have to fake it they didn't have to be disingenuous they didn't have to be about it they just weren't right for me absolutely right? and that's what builds right like we always say we heard it like there's so many bus sentences we hear like your network defines your net worth. But do we really value these things? Do we really value each and every connection we make? And uh, that's when the rush comes in, right? Like every person you connect with, you wish you had that kind of um, quick sale from them or like you can convert them as soon as possible, right? <laughs> and that's when we all want that. Like we want the dream. <laughs> we want the clients coming into our DMs, running to our DMs, we all want that, right? But the truth of the matter is it's going to take you a lot more than just one piece of content or one story. It's going to take you a lot of relationship building right there. And one of the things I love about you as well, Rachel, as a creator, is that you talk about relationship and connection a lot, which is Thank something you. I've never 
sales people talk a lot about they talk a lot about the other side but not this side of things you know so that's really interesting yeah okay so i do want to bring up okay so many ideas here i'm like what do i where do i want to start here um i guess there's two more things that i really want to bring up and i think these are just examples since we're kind of sharing them anyways on like what it like what is sleazy and why it doesn't feel good like integrity there but one thing that I often see is that we often like you know like when someone has an offer and they put the price and then they slash it and they're like here's the actual price now if you sign up now and that's to me like the same thing as FOMO kind of going back to that it's really deceptive and that's Mm -hmm. into um I have another point with deception as well but that doesn't feel like integrity because I get that sometimes we discount things for special offers. That's one thing. But when that is your tactic, like it's not a strategy. It doesn't make me feel good. And it's very obvious that people are doing it, right? 1000%. And I completely agree with you on that because sometimes you, you, as an outsider, you can see if you're doing it with authenticity or you're doing it because you just want more sales or, you, you know, like... For example, like I always say, like I have a policy in my own business that after every two quarters, I revise and go back to my offers and see if they need an increase in price. And it's my own job and responsibility to inform my audience about it. But it's not the way that they will never be able to access it. I will have a price increase eventually. It's up to you if you want to do it now, if you want to do it like six months from now. But I'm not just going to like within a week slash that offer price like three times to like try and sell it, you know. And that's when you know that something is not right because somebody's just trying to make you buy, you know, instead of a genuine uh, price increase or a genuine, you know, yep. whatever change in service. Right, right. And there is nothing wrong with discounting. There's nothing wrong with reason. Absolutely. Have to do it. It's how you go about it, right? And your intention behind it. And then the other thing I want to say about deception and agree with is deceptive in your questions. You know, like when someone says, hey, it's so nice to meet you. What are your business goals? Like at that point, just be like, are you looking for a business coach? Like it's it's almost worse trying to act like you're friendly just to to gauge people, right? Have you ever got that DM, Rachel? Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Literally, I can't believe people still do that, but I did get one like a month ago and I was just, I wanted, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that. So I, 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 I mean, I can't even count the number of times I've had people like in the last one month pop in and ask me about my business. I said, I mean, take me out to dinner at least before taking yeah. me to bed. Like, you know, what is happening? Like, at least speak with me a little bit about me. Get to know me. Like, right. don't just like jump to things like... <laughs> Why should I tell you if I had a good launch or not? Like, you know, let's talk about it. Like, I need to know who you are. I just yeah. don't pop by and ask me about my business. Like, that's just too much, you know? Right. So, You're not going to tell someone that you just met all this personal information. Like, absolutely. And for me, my, my business is personal, you know? Maybe for you, it's not. But, like, let's think about it. Our businesses are very personal and sensitive to us because that's all we have. Like, we are the faces behind our brands. So... Like to ask me about what's happening in my business, I know immediately you want to know if I'm doing well or not, so you can pitch me. You know, like I'm not that dumb. And if I'm not and you're not, 90% of the Instagram audience is not dumb anymore. And right. it's very important to understand that. Right, right. And um, this is such a good segue to. Uh, so uh, we have a comment again from socially. I want to say your name right. Your Ritza? Your Ritza? Your Ritza. Okay. Yeah. So you said, yes, genuine connections and relationships open up so many opportunities for you, but also you get with like-minded people and you can always learn from each other. So I think this is a great segue because you had brought up how, like, how important relationships are. And I think that when it comes to integrity, you have to understand your intention of why you have integrity. And the truth is, like, people don't buy if they don't trust And the only way that they'll trust you is if you invest in them and get to know them. And that's why relationship building is so important. Right? Absolutely. I I couldn't agree more. Like I would say relationships is like the basis of everything that we do online. And we have no products to sell. We have no products to sell. We sell services. We're service-based entrepreneurs. 
the only <laughs> thing that people yeah the only thing that people have of us is us and our integrity <laughs> our values our, what we what we represent and the transformation that we can bring these two things literally are everything in our business they are i agree well i'm curious then since we've been talking about what integrity doesn't look like what do you think it what do you mean to have it what does it look like how I would think, you uh, <laughs> i think the exact opposite of everything we just said <laughs> so yeah for me integrity is just um it's sometimes difficult also because uh, like some things have become buzz things to do and it's very important that sometimes for example if you're somebody who believes in using income revenue generation as a tactic and being open about your income and being you know very vocal about how much you can do for other people if you believe in that that's great that's where your value lies and that's integral to you so that's your integrity mm. if you do not believe in that and you believe in probably being authentic to what you feel and maybe working more on the other sides of transformation not just revenue then probably that is what's authentic to you and that's integral to you i think what happens is people's integrity is like are like chameleons today where sometimes they just change as per what is required by the industry and what everybody is doing and that's really really a key factor to stop following and start leading mm. you know and and i think i just yeah said it <laughs> no i guess i have my notes on what it meant to me i literally had to be a leader and to always come from a place of service and i'm really glad that you brought that up and i would also say that it's doing the thing even when you don't want to absolutely i agree with you and that's a tough one right like i mean for mm -hmm. every every one of us it's very easy to come here and just be, do the thing which we want to do and not do the thing that doesn't that like, feels a bit difficult yeah i absolutely agree right right and that's not saying like uh, you know if you're uncomfortable like you know pass that discomfort and do the thing it's like doing it because you know it's the right thing and not just marking up just to mark down and not just counting like or just like coming from this place of like i have to fill these spots and i'll do whatever it takes even if it doesn't come with integrity and i think you know sticking to your values which is what you said i love that and being a, like a leader and saying no this is how i want things to do even if it's hard i'm going to stick to it absolutely and we all have that point that breaking point or the tipping point where you're selling something for a while and you okay initially you had a buzz and then you're going to have a buzz at the end maybe when you're launching or not launching or whatever and in the middle it gets dull and lull and nothing's really happening and that's when you're really like okay maybe I should do this maybe I should do that maybe I should try extra hard you know and all these thoughts come up which may not be in alignment with your value and that's that's the point where you really need to stand your ground and be like no i know that the work i do today will show the results i want tomorrow and that's exactly so important through that process because it's very easy to then just you know go into these clickbaity things markety things <laughs> the gimmicks so yeah absolutely it's understanding that the things you do now will have long term success versus short term yes right? absolutely so one other thing is that you said to be really intentional with what you're doing. So what do you mean it what does it mean to you to show up with intention? For me intention is everything. Everything. <laughs> like there are do you even like if you google right now you will know how many people are posting every single day on Instagram. And trust me it's in the millions at least I'm sure, What? right? <laughs> so if you really really have anything to say then make sure you bring that to the table because that's what posting or creating or showing up with intention means that means that we have our business we have our social media our instagram and then we have other things that we do to help us the activities that we do to help us right so i always say that you need to know what your business goal is align it with your social media goal and then work towards it intentionally that means creating 20 reels in like a period of 10 days is not going to help you if your if your uh, goal is sales for example 
maybe because reels are made for visibility maybe because yes maybe one or two reels will help you sell but not all reels can help you sell no. unless you come with intention because so every single i call it the conversion cookie and you have your reels yeah you have your reels you have your ig tvs you have your ig lives you have your carousels you have all these different things to play with so understand that each one of them is built for a different intention and yeah. learn how to leverage that for your business so for example if you right now need to sell then nurture your existing community instead of jumping on a trend because that's going to help you way more than the other one so whenever you create anything make sure it has some intention behind it because that's what's going to stick with your audience not just 10 things to do or 20 things to be but like a little bit deeper than that you know right right it's um yeah i mean you have to be i think we have to remember that social media is a tool it is not your business your business the service that you provide and social media is the tool to reach people right or to get people and i always preach this i think you will 100% agree your posts are like your windows right it's here's what you're going to get inside it's like you're come take a look right and when people are viewing your profile it's like they're window shopping and when they follow you and engage with you, they're coming in to check out a little bit more of what you're doing and to actually sell and close that deal you got to talk to them right you got to nurture them you got to get to know them right and so be intentional of what you're putting out there you want the best of the best so that they see it right like you know stores going to put their their newest product or their best product or their best look out in the window right to say here here's a peek of what you can get inside right <laughs> yes absolutely i couldn't agree with you more on that like i think you literally stole the words from my mouth because i have the same analogy which i use all the time is that your instagram is your shop online whether you understand it or not so if you have to relate it with the offline shop think about it this way that your instagram stories are your display window you're going to have like you said the peek into your world if you go lower your highlights are probably your best sellers and yeah. then maybe if you go lower down in the feed maybe that is your internal racks and the comment sections is your changing rooms you know and where all the discussion is happening and what everybody cares about and then you have your dms which are your customer support so you literally have your entire shop right there and you just need to know how to use each part of it you know and like tap into each part of it right oh my god that was so good oh so okay <laughs> like that and then you know we talked about being friendly just to make a sale or discount it's like the same thing as now going to the store and interacting and someone you know is just nice to you because they think you're going to buy and then when they realize you're not buying they step away right and mm-hmm. the whole like vibe changes mhm absolutely and um, sorry i think i lost you in the middle oh, yeah no. No, no. Yeah. No, I mean yeah. that's something to think about. I think we forget what it would be on the other side sometimes because we are all consumers. We will bought something probably every day, right? So Yeah. And I like it because you know Rachel, you come from a strong uh, uh background of being in front, right? Of your sales, you were like literally in store, you were handling clients and stuff. And that's what I feel for you translates in the online world because it's the same thing it's not really different i think people when they come to online world of marketing they're just like oh this is a completely new ball game i said no <laughs> there's a human being behind that follower screen mm-hmm. that you see on your phone and that's the person you have to tap into and for me this month has been a theme of storytelling because i know like the more mm-hmm. better stories you tell and i'm a marketer my job is to tell the best story and that's the highest way of making connection with somebody because people see themselves in you and that again relates back to intentional content right oh storytelling is such a powerful thing right it it helps people picture themselves with you and in there right and we all perceive what that looks like in different ways but i think that when you share stories it's a very powerful tech in marketing and sales right mm-hmm. absolutely and right. like for me like stories is one way would be probably that they see themselves in us or they see themselves in the future or they see themselves 
before, in the middle, and after of our, of our service. And it's our job to be not the hero of the story. They are the hero of the story, your idol clients, your audience. You are just the messenger or the guide. That's it, you know? You are so well spoken. I'm like, yes, like you're speaking my <laughs> You are taking <laughs> from me too. And I, oh gosh, like how often do we want to make ourselves the hero and make ourselves like look so good and impressive that we forget that it's really actually about the customer. Absolutely. And, and Right, and they need to be the hero, and we are there to support their journey. And that's what marketing and sales is about: is helping them and serving them. Right? Absolutely, hundred and million percent. Yes. <laughs> okay, so, so, um, what is the cost of not having integrity, in your opinion, or being intentional in your? Sorry, I think I lost you for oh. a second, Rachel. I'm so sorry. Now you're back. <laughs> What do you feel is the cost of not having integrity in your business? What's, oh my God. Like I would say the thing is that it's, there's no short term cost is what I'll tell you. So what will happen is that in the short term, you will make a lot of profit. You'll have a lot of revenue and you will be really, really successful really fast. But I always say like quick success or quick money is the worst way to, it's the work. It's the end of your business because I'm not saying I don't mind it, but <laughs> the honest truth is if it's coming too quick and the transformation is happening too quick, maybe you need to ask yourself, are you being fully uh, in integrity? Because you're not probably when you are just signing people left, right, center, you will have short term quick success, but your long term success would be really, really, really low compared to everybody else who is working with integrity because you're not building a sustainable business. You're building a quick profitable business and they're two very different things so yeah for me that is the cost of you may not have any short-term cost but you will 1000 percent have a long-term cost of running a company based on just not deceptive but like you know not the right intentional marketing right well and the more that you grow and the faster that you grow you have to be prepared for it because if you aren't it's going to impact your client experience and client experience when it is not good will it directly impact perception and sales right no matter how good your marketing is absolutely and i think i'm a living example of that because <laughs> no. I remember yeah, trust me, like a few years back, when I think it was my first, after my first year in business, I hit my first, or maybe it was like 10 months into business, I hit my first 5k a month. And uh, I was so excited over the moon, I was so happy to hit 5k, mm -hmm. obviously. And uh, eventually, after the first month in 5k, I realized I was overwhelmed, overbooked, <laughs> underpaid. <laughs> I was just having all these problems because I had only seen the short term goal. I had not seen the long term, uh, how do you say, it? retention ability of that mm -hmm. goal. And literally the next month I was back to like two or three K. I was like, no, this is not the way I'm going to do it because it's not a very sustainable way for me as a business owner or my clients. And then I started the slow and sustainable growth towards it with very achievable goals and achievable way of, you know, progression. And eventually when I hit the 5k again, it was never a problem anymore, right? Because I had not compromised on my service in any way when I did that. And now it's sustainable. It's more achievable. You're Absolutely. I'm going to do it again because you've built yeah. yourself up to it. And I love that you can walk the walk and you can speak to it. I think that's that's so important. I know for me, when I'm considering working with someone, like, do they actually know or are they learning because of me? Like, I mean, obviously we, we go on everything, not to say that we don't, but it's really important that someone does get your journey. And that's where storytelling comes in, right? And yeah. I think what you said too, is that when we don't have integrity, as much as we should, we tend to feel really burnt out because of this hustle and frustrated and we're just not having fun. And not to say that frustration out cannot come from other things. That absolutely 100% can. It's not the only reason. But I think that when we don't have integrity, there's a strength and a pressure 
to constantly hit something at any cost and not feel confident in your abilities and strategy. Exactly. You said it word by word because the truth is that the more we try and hold ourselves against this milestone that is sometimes more than what we can actually achieve, the more we start pushing ourselves to burn ourselves to the ground to get there, right? If I remember in the first year where everybody was like hustling, like I remember it was I think probably 2019 where hustle was the word, you know, and everybody <laughs> was hustling. And it was celebrated if you were a hustler because you were killing it, you were going out of the way, you were doing these things. But nobody really sh showed you the other side of the hustle, the burnout, all these different things, which today we are more aware of because you're costing yourself a lot long term. You don't, you're, you're here to stay. If you're a leader mm -hmm. who wants to lead for years to come, how are you going to do that if you're going to burn yourself out within three months? You will not want to touch this service again, right? No, you'll resent it. You'll resent it. Exactly. Absolutely. Right. All right, I have to ask you one more question and I feel like this is a great and the conversation that I know many that we often believe that we are not good at marketing or sales. And I believe that it is a lot and is often why we are held back from marketing more or selling more. So what, what is your take on that? Um, I think this is something I get all the time from my clients also because the thing is that I work a lot with heart-based leaders. I work a lot with people who are creative. They are a lot to do with, uh, I would say, the energetical side of things. I am more the strategic side of things. So I like working with also people who need the strategy or the help or, you know, the push. Because the thing is that with creatives, it's very easy to feel like... Um, you feel really inauthentic when you're, for them, it's not promoting their business. It's promoting themselves and promoting, um, selling themselves and having to sell themselves. The thought itself is so overwhelming because it feels in, not in alignment to their values because it feels like whenever I see that somebody's having a problem with this, it's because their value is stopping them. It's their limiting belief that is stopping them and telling them, do you really think you are this expert? Do you really think you can actually sell yourself? Who are you to sell you? There's so many different thoughts in right. their own head and internal conflict because 99% of the time, it's not the strategical things that they are bad at. It's the internal things that they're bad at. They're bad at dealing with this dialogue within themselves. And that's what projects outward. And that's why selling mm. or marketing or promoting becomes like this big thing and one thing I love to say to them is like your business and you are completely separate things. Remember that just because you are a human brand and a personal brand does not mean that your business and you are the same because then whatever happens to your business, you take it personally. Every time somebody signs up with you, you're extremely happy and you feel proud of yourself. When somebody says no to you, you feel rejected because you are correlating your value with the value of what somebody else is saying for your offer or service, right? And that's where the discomfort happens for the yeah. service provider. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I mean, that goes into objection handling, right? Is how we see that rejection. Absolutely. Sure. Um, you know, and I would definitely say anything can be taught, right? It's just skill. And it takes time to really get good at a skill, but it's nothing yeah. that and the one thing maybe you hear it too is i'm an introvert i'm not i'm naturally not good at selling but i will tell you some of the best sales people that i've seen over the last decade are introverts because they know how to listen and be intentional imagine that like can you beat that like this is such a good story because for example for me i i'm not saying i'm an introvert i would probably say i'm an extroverted introvert but uh, i do have this issue that i I absolutely hate videos. I used to hate them all my life and uh, I don't even know why. And when I actually started doing it and started getting comfortable with it, today it is second nature to me. And the thing is that people always see you at your best and think that that's how you were born. I don't think any of us were born selling to a phone. <laughs> I think we all kind of learned it. We learned how to in, uh, inculcate that skill within ourselves so that we can be this person, right? Who we have to be. And I always, for me, what really works when I'm working with these people or like even, even for myself is that 
if i'm a heart based leader and if my work can actually help people wouldn't it be a disservice to not show up and yeah yes, help others? yes. Right? it is it is it is a disservice to not help others and share your beautiful knowledge right like yeah absolutely whenever you show up rachel you have this bright smile you're talking about something it really helps me and i know that at the end of the day it's not about the sale or the not the sale or any of those things it's because you are providing me all that you have through this screen and it's really got to do with that like there's no magic secret behind signing clients the the real secret is actually you <laughs> if you can just know that you are actually doing a disservice by not talking about what you can do right for us you are actually blocking your own flow of opportunities within your business right oh everything you say we are so aligned and i love it and i'm going to end it with this i think that when we often search for new right we're constantly in the state i have to market to new people we neglect what we already have we disservice the community that we've already built by not just showing up and serving them and nurturing them and getting to know them. Yes, absolutely. So, that is something so true. Yep. Yes, well for everyone that has been here, we appreciate you. for everyone that's watching the replay. Oh my gosh, we appreciate you and can't wait to hear what you have to say, but um I would love to know how can people find you? How can they work with you if they want to know more? How if they want to have marketing with integrity? guys come join me come follow me come see what i do if you feel like joining me join me if not it's completely all right <laughs> come have a look at my store <laughs> at social with sim and you can find me there you can find all the links in my bio you could ask me about my offerings that i have i have my latest masterclass which are happening this month which are literally mm -hmm. starting at just 67 so they are a steal and i really don't know when i'll do them again i already had 10 sign ups so i'm looking for more and there is no four more <laughs> so come ask me about it and i am so excited and thank you so much rachel for having me today i really appreciate it oh my absolute pleasure and thank you for sharing your knowledge with us and this conversation and i'm really excited to hear what everyone got from this and what they're most excited to try and i think the most important thing i think we both can say is just be yourself have integrity and and be the leader that you want to see. Yes. Be the change. <laughs> want to see as well, but also the leader. <laughs> so, well, thank you so much, Sam, and have a good rest of your day. Bye. Great. Right, bye.